Hi, everyone, and welcome to Chair Yoga. I uh, do want to read my little script today about asking for your help. And that is that I need a thousand subscriptions on YouTube to kind of make a presence there and maybe earn a few dollars. So um, I have a long way to go, but I'd appreciate it if you are joining me on YouTube and you have not yet subscribed that you would take the time to do that. Maybe even make a comment about class and uh, hit that like button. All of that helps and adds up to um, a better presence for me and maybe, a, like I said, an opportunity to earn some money off of that. So thank you for that. Okay, today's class theme is the Ananda Maya Kosha is what I put in the email. Um, ananda is the Sanskrit word for joy or bliss, Ananda. And it's, you know, what yoga's take on it is that um, it's, it's innate. It is our true nature. It's not, whereas, um, at least in the Western world, we use the word happiness probably more so than joy. And happiness, by its very root, is about what happens. And joy is about who we are, you know, that it's deep within us as our nature. And I mean, I think about it, I've got a couple signs in my room right now uh, that say smile so that I can remind myself um, how, how impactful that is when, when, I, when you smile. You know, it's just literally, it's the outward sign of your inner joy. And it's come so naturally, you know, we don't have to think about smiling. Our face just moves into a smile. When we want to be a welcoming, when we are feeling gratitude, when we are glad to see somebody, uh, all kinds of ways that we just move into a smile naturally. And it's like shining your light. It's absolutely like that. So the outward sign of inner joy is our smile. So I'm going to invite you to um, use that as you come into your transition time with me. So find a nice, comfortable way that you feel that you're sitting properly and upright. So you're making a shift. You're making a, a mindful shift about how you're holding your body. So you're coming into that kind of a seated position and, you know, lifting up, lengthening through the spine. Now, don't close your eyes yet because we're going to use a mudra. The mudra looks like this. You're going to just have all of your fingers wrapped into your thumb and then your pinky finger sticks out. This is the gesture of the inner smile. So it's just grabbing all fingers with your thumb and then just lay that on your lap. So you just lay the hands down onto your lap and then close your eyes. But when you close your eyes, keep the smile on your face. You have now the gesture of inner joy that mudra. So this is going to keep you more mindful. You're feeling in your hands that you're doing something different. There's something different going on here. It's this mudra that you're holding as a reminder about inner joy. And use that, you know, maybe the smile on your face, as long as you can do it, holding the mudra as you just deeply connect with your sense of breath. And I want you to use whatever you found to be useful in that regard. We have, we have used and named a number of breath practices. And I want you to just take your time to just breathe in a way that is kind of your go-to. It's comfortable, it's easy. And you can find your breath while you are aware that today's practice is about uncovering anything, anything at all that blocks us from realizing our true nature as joy. See if that breath can come in and out through the nose, just as a suggestion. Whatever works for you as you connect with your felt experience of breathing. Always and every time yoga invites us into this experience of ourselves from the inside out. We move from thinking and doing to feeling and being. It's a big shift and it's an important one. Feel how your body starts to relax with the breath now. Notice that, that's all you have to do. 
Just notice it, be aware. Relaxing your shoulders and just feel how your body shifts when you bring your awareness to your breath. Feel a relaxation in your mouth and your facial muscles, maybe in your belly. Maybe that's place in your body where you hold stress. We all have one, it seems, where we just use it as our particular area of our body, oftentimes neck, shoulders, sometimes low back, various places. Go there now and see if this breath awareness isn't making a difference right there in that very location in your body. My bet is that it is making a difference. And I'm changing my language as we come into the time now of setting our intention. I've often used, probably always used the phrase, uh, what do you need? See what you need. And I'm going to change that. What do you desire? And then let that be, and so it is. You don't need to worry about trying to recall it all the time. What did I say I was going to make, make my intention to be? Just let it just let it release from you like the breath. And know that it is so. Let's exhale completely and open your eyes now. Flutter those eyes open, get used to the light. Keep your hands in the mudra, keep your hands in the gesture of the inner smile for another moment as they just lay on your lap now, breathing in, breathing out. Lift your chest up, get your shoulder blades back, feel your feet to the ground. Push your feet to the ground. I'm not using the block just yet. I'm gonna use it for different reasons, so instead, how about lining your feet up with the legs of your chair? So your feet are sort of in line with the legs of your chair. And yet you're still creating that right angle. You know, you want your heels to be under your knees. Don't get your feet too far out or too far tucked in underneath yourself. Let's sync up the breath as we begin. Inhale now, release your hands, palms to come together overhead. Straighten your arms out. Exhale, bow into your own heart. Inhale back up and exhale with a big backstroke all the way around. We're gonna do two more of the backstroke. Inhaling up, go way back and down. Inhale up, exhale as you go way back and down. I want you to do start with some shoulder rolls. Get those shoulder blades up, back and down. Keep your arms close to your side. I'm actually touching the chair just touching this edge of the chair seat just kind of gives me guidance and there's that tactile experience, you know? So I know for sure I've got my arms where I want them to be because I'm using the chair, the touch of the chair to help me. So exaggerate this movement and keep your belly pulled in. We're trying to keep our head in a neutral position. So I want you to, I don't want you to go to so much trouble. I don't know that you do, but to try to look at the screen. I want you to really pay attention to how you're holding your body. Maybe a glance now and then to make sure you got what I was saying, but mostly you'll be familiar with these things. So you can just trust it and keep your body well positioned. Yep, we're still doing it. We're still rolling the shoulders. Scrunch them up and release. Now this time we're gonna scrunch up, make a fist with your hand, pull your, bend your elbows, pull in. You're gonna make a fist. Scrunch up, scrunch and hold, 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 hold the breath in. Scrunch, hold, and then release it all. Soften everything about that. One more time. Scrunch, you've got a shrug shoulder, fists tight, hold everything tight, hold it on the inhale, and exhale, release all of that all the way out. Let's try our shoulder rolls going the other way now. Now, hands on your lap make shoulder rolls easier. So if you're kind of needing a little help, keep your hands on your lap instead because it's just the heaviness of your arms. When our arms are alongside the chair's frame, 
the, it's heavier. Your shoulders have to work harder to do this movement because you've added extra weight. So that's an adjustment you can make if you need to. Exaggerate that. You're trying to get the shoulder blades now to spread apart. On the first go around, we were squeezing the shoulder blades toward the midline, and now we're pulling them apart from the spine or away from. Stay with it. Head is neutral. Find your breath now. Just find the breath that you're aware of it. You feel it. You don't have to steer it. It doesn't have to be any particular way that you're breathing, but you're aware of it. Same thing now, shrug, fist, squeeze, hold, squeeze like crazy, hold it in, hold it, and then release it all. Whew. One more time, we're doing it, squeezing, squeezing, shrug, release it. I lied, we're doing it one more time. Squeeze, shrug, squeeze, squeeze and release it and just shake that out. Just move that around, turn your head, loosen that up. Good, arms are coming alongside the frame of the chair. We're moving into our cow and neck cat. So I want your chest to come forward. Your head is neutral, arch that back body, squeeze those shoulder blades toward the spine. Hold that to feel it, to feel that arch of the back body. Exhale now round through your back body and either let your hands glide on your thighs or extend your arms away from you, but keep your shoulders above your hips. That's the exhale, this is the cat pose. And then begin to move in a vinyasa style. Inhale is the extension of the spine. Exhale is the roundness of the back body. We're gonna do it a few times, stay with it now. Keep your feet grounded. Keep your feet lined up with the legs of the chair so it's purposeful. Your feet and legs are lined up in a purposeful way. Feel it in your body. You're bringing your awareness to the felt experience, not just what you think about this, not in the, the opinion you have about it, but the felt experience about it. Stay with it. We're going into a forward fold. So next time you're rounding your back body, I'm gonna suggest you get your hands on your legs and glide yourself down into that. Look down and under the chair, see if you can lay your armpits over your kneecaps or in any, any event, you're laying your belly chest down onto your thighs and you let your head hang low, eyes are wide open. If you open your feet wide, many people open their feet wider than what we started with. Just remember, always line up your knees and your ankles so the knees move and the feet move, not just one or the other. Feel the heaviness of your head. See if you can allow just the surrender of and the awareness of the heaviness of the head. You really feel gravitational pull or the interaction that you are feeling now with gravity. Hands are gonna jump up onto your thighs, squeeze your elbows into your waist, bring yourself up halfway. Back of the head, neck and spine, back body is in a diagonal line. Pull that chin in towards your throat. Now press your feet to the ground and lift up your perineum. I always press my hands into my thighs. So there's this, this uh, dynamic tension I create. Now this is where we're working on the uh, perineum to tighten and tone the muscles of the perineum, the floor of your pelvis. So I want you to imagine that you're lifting your pelvis up off the chair seat and then relax. So you'll just kind of do it and then not do it. You just press and you know, engage in that and then you release and relax. And if you want to add the O shape of your mouth and let the inhale be the vagal tone breath where you're gonna kind of pull in the inhale through the O shape of your mouth. Exhale, just soften everything. But you feel the shape of your mouth change. You feel the inhale pulling in, and this is a way to um, improve your vagal tone. I'm going to take a course on the vagal nerve. I got one lined up. One more time. All about the perineum, adding that vagal tone if you choose, and releasing.
Good, let's come back to our neutral position, our mountain pose. Arms are gonna drop alongside that frame of the chair, palms face forward. Let's sync up the breath, inhale. Palms come together, reach up, stretch your arms as long and strong as you can with no bend in the elbow. Stay with it, we're, of course we're breathing in and out. Light touch with your fingers, light touch with your palms. Feel the lift, you gotta use your legs to lift. Push your feet into the ground so your whole body is allowing you to come into this posture. On your next exhale, we bow to the heart. Inhale back up and exhale, go all the way around. Here's where our block's gonna come into play. Take your block and put it on your left side so that you could easily touch it. And remember there's all, there's the variety of heights that you can use and you have to pick what's gonna work best for you. So lean into that where you can keep your pelvis down. You're not gonna feel a listing. You're gonna lean into that where the pelvis stays grounded and either the fingertips or the palm is down on that and we're gonna stack the shoulders. And that your ear feels like your ear is, is facing your hand. Let's let that other arm lift up. Both arms straight. Now find your drishti. So once you line up your head properly, focus your eyes, focus your eyes and feel yourself making this subtle adjustment to kind of pull down that left side of the butt cheek, pull down that left side of your pelvis so you feel grounded and intentional about how you set this up. Breathe in and breathe out. Now pull your arm, the top arm and your head back an inch or two, back an inch or two. Uh-huh, keep breathing, feel your feet. Let's come out of it. Top arm will drop. We'll bring ourselves forward. We're going to just shrug and release, shrug and release, any kind of reset your body needs and bringing the block to the other side. And we're just going to do the same setup. So you're going to lean down into it. So your shoulders line up. I've got my palm down. You could do fingertips if that's better. Make sure you're feeling that you're if, if your block is too far away from the chair, that's when you're, let, you're setting yourself up to lose that contact of your pelvis to the chair seat. So bring it close enough to you that you can stay grounded in your pelvis. Top arm lifts and we, we're gonna let our ear face our hand. So very neutral with your head right now. Your ear is just facing your hand and you know that's so secure for your neck to have your neck and spine lined up like this. It's just secure. Feel the feet grounding. See if you can make that effort to make sure that left side is not trying to lift up, that you're keeping left side, the sit bone, the, the buttocks down on the chair. And then slightly like we did the first time, let your head come back and your top arm come back. Just an inch or two. Feel the difference. Now breathe into that, a full breath in, and a full breath out. Good, and then we're gonna disengage from that. Come back out, shrug and release, shrug and release. Let's just stay on this same side because we're gonna do one more thing on each side. Might as well keep the block over here. This is called an extended, an extended angle. We, in a warrior, the warrior series, this is often done I'm standing up, but we're gonna do it in a, from the chair. So I want you to extend your left leg out with your Heel down, toes down, and your toes are facing forward. So your foot is just sort of parallel to that. Well, I was gonna use the mat as a reference. I'm sure that you don't all have a mat, but your toes are facing forward and you just got that leg extended. Other leg is stayed is kind of right where it was. Now we're gonna go back to the block. Now see that long line that we got from our long extended leg. This time, instead of reaching to the sky with our hand, turn the palm to reach up and overhead. Again, you're facing, your ear is facing the hand on the block. Press your foot to the floor as much as you can on that left side. And that left arm is long and strong as it glides past your head by way of your ear. Let's breathe in and breathe out. Now, what the efforting is, is that I want you to lift your rib cage up toward the ceiling. 
Lift your whole rib cage. It's a side experience. The side of you on the rib cage is lifting up toward the ceiling. See, now I'm doing it. You can't see it. So that's telling you this is a real inside job. You're feeling it from the inside as you lift your rib cage up. Breathe in and breathe out. Let's get that top arm down and just bring yourself back to neutral. Step that foot back in, shake that out. Any kind of movement that you need to reset the body. And we're gonna move our block to the other side so we can do that extended angle, that warrior pose that's known as the extended angle on the other side. So start by letting your leg extend out. Toes face forward, heel right behind it. You know, depending on your chair to get your leg extended, you might have to shimmy a little bit. Move from your normal position and we're gonna find the block. Let your arm extend past your ear, palm faces down. Your ear, your left ear is, is um, facing the hand on the block. Lift up through your rib cage and deepen your breath. Feel the connection of both feet to the floor, especially that extended leg. And don't forget your full exhalation. Inhale and exhale, lift the rib cage up. Excellent, let's get that top arm down. We'll just start to disentangle from all that, bring your feet back together and shimmy around. And uh, we're gonna just tuck in my block away. Let's open up the feet into a wide angle now. So heels are in, toes are out, and you're just gonna circle around. Let's loosen up anything we might've gotten tightened up there. So we're re releasing and relaxing anything that we were efforting with. I want you to really feel this in your uh, pelvis. You feel movement on the inside muscles. You know, there's a quite a few muscles relevant, very relevant muscles to your low back experience and your hip experience uh, that we're trying to just stay in touch with, you know, experiencing that, loosening, relaxing. Let's change the direction of that circular movement. And let's come back to our neutral position. Let's get hands on the shoulders now and just do some gentle twists side to side. Keep your elbows elevated at the height of your armpits. And you decide about what your head is doing. You could turn to look from side to side, but if you find that makes you dizzy or it's uncomfortable in any way, just keep your head steady, looking straight forward and let your arms move and let your torso twist your head doesn't have to join that action. So you decide what works better for you. Keep your legs very stable. Don't forget about your legs. When we start moving up top, we kind of lose track of what's going on on our base. I want you to keep a nice, strong, purposeful base. Stay with it now. Let's come back to center. I just want you to tilt down to touch elbow to the outside of your thigh or below that. So if you got the ability to go pretty low on that, do try it. Soften your wrists. I've got a friend who teaches and she always uses the phrase, the little teapot, you know, I'm a little teapot. And she does this little tilting action with that. That just came to my mind. One more on each side. Let's come back to center, release those hands open and close it up. My hands are just facing forward, open, close it up. Let's do that as vinyasa, inhale is open, exhale is close. Inhale is open, exhale is close. We're gonna do another forward fold. Next time your hands come toward the center, let's fold down into the space between our legs. Keep your seat on the chair but look down and underneath you. So now I want you to do the big belly breathing. 
Feel your belly moving as you breathe. Keep your eyes open and hands are on the floor or touching your feet. Just bring them to something. Touch your legs if that's what's available for you. Ground your hands. Big belly breathing, surrendering the weight of your head. Ah. Ah. One more breath. Ah. Jump your hands to your thighs, squeeze your elbows into your waistline, create that diagonal line, back of the head, neck, and spine are in alignment. Let's open up our arms away from our body like wings would be. Press your feet to the floor. Float yourself. It feels like you're floating yourself up off that chair seat. Strong, strong leg engagement, lifting the perineum. Find your breath. Excellent. Inhale up, palms come together overhead. Exhale, let's bow into our heart. Inhale up, exhale, go all the way around. And let's bring our legs back to center. You're gonna push your feet underneath you and boot yourself up. We're gonna come into standing. So I want you to just boot yourself out of the chair a couple times so you get you know, really comfortable and secure in that movement. All right, let's use our chair to support tabletop. Tabletop is the position where we come right up to the chair and we've got our hands on the chair seat. Shoulders are lined up over your wrist. So you're, you're creating table legs. Your arms are the table legs. Your, your legs are table legs and the back body is the table's top. So this is why they call this tabletop position. So come into that position now and just feel it as you line up. See, now here's what I want you to watch me for a second. Don't let your head droop. That's drooping your head. Bring your head, neck and spine in alignment. So you got to prop your head up so the back of your head is in line with your spine. We'll shift our weight into our left leg and get the right foot up off the floor. Extend it straight back or just keep a bent knee. Keep your gaze right at the chair seat. So I want you to straighten, bend, straighten, bend. Maybe there's not much straightening going on. That's okay. Just movement. Steady the breath. You're being held by that strong standing leg. That's nice. Let's switch sides, both feet to the floor. Now do a little shimmy, bend the knees and let your hips sway side to side. A little reset. Again, making sure back of the head, neck and spine are in alignment. We're in a true tabletop position. Let's just do the other leg, a straight leg, a bent knee, a straight leg. Toes should be pointing down, by the way. Not out and away from you, but down. Now rhythm of breath, so you're not holding your breath. Gazes straight down at the chair seat. We're gonna do now, we're looking at shimmy, shimmy. So we gotta reset, but then we're gonna go back to the first side and do what's called the, what's it called? Bird dog. <laughs> so that's opposite limb. So I want you to shift your weight back into that left standing leg, extend straight or a bent knee, your choice. Opposite arm extends past your ear, fingertips are reaching overhead into that bird dog position. So you've got legs, your limbs are extending, your opposite limbs extend away from the body, away from the chair seat, and you hold it and breathe in and breathe out. Before we just come out of that, round your back body, bring your elbow towards your bent knee, rounding the back body, tuck your chin in towards your throat, hold that a minute, breathe in, Breathe out, everything comes down and we're gonna shimmy. Maybe we're gonna lift our head up. Maybe we're gonna stand up, your choice. We gotta reset. Catch up with your breath. If your wrists are feeling this, you know, you can, you can bend them the opposite way. If you've got your palms down and you're feeling, man, that hurts my wrist change the bend of it. You can even massage that a little bit. That'll, that'll help a lot. We're gonna come back to our tabletop, get your head positioned well so it's in line with the spine. Opposite leg, opposite arm. So we got changed our legs and arms from the one we did at the beginning. So we're on our second side. 
Arm extends past your ear, reaching out toward the past your head. Leg is either straight or there's a bend in the knee. And your strong standing leg is holding that bird dog. Find the fullness of your breath. Exhale completely every time. Before we leave, we're bending the elbow, bending the knee, rounding through the back body, rounding, bringing your chin in towards your throat, rounding, holding the breath in and out, breathing in and out, I should say. And then both feet to the floor, and we're gonna come on up. So bend your knees and bring yourself all the way upright, all the way up, shoulder rolls or whatever your body needs. Deepen the breath. Let's practice some squats. I'm gonna just turn my chair a little bit. You might not have to do anything at all so that you can use the chair to support wide leg stance and bending and straightening. So you're letting your hips and buttocks drop into that squat as much as your body will allow. Keep your body weight pulling back towards your heels. That's gonna be very much more friendly to your knees. And if you're just feeling this in the knees in a way that you just can't, then don't do it. Just wait for the next thing. Just don't do it. But if you can get your body weight back into the heels, it's usually pretty, pretty friendly. But I get it. So your knees are the boss. Again, when we come upright, I want you to maybe square your feet again so that you can just go from side to side, swaying your hips. Pay attention to what you're doing, how you're managing the weight of your head, side to side sways. And while we're here, let's try a downward facing dog. Hands come to the chair seat. We start backing up. Arms will extend right past our ears. I want your arms as close to your head as you feel comfortable with. And pull back through the sit bones. Pull back through your thigh bones. Pull back through the femur bones. That'll kind of straighten your legs. Try to straighten out so there's no, as, you know, you're trying to get rid of some of the bend at the knee. Keep your chin tucked in towards your throat. Your body weight is held by your legs and your hips and buttocks, not by your hands. So if you're shoving body weight into the chair, readjust because that's not appropriate and you don't need to. Your body can be held entirely in your legs. Exhale completely and start walking yourself back to the chair. We're gonna meet in an upright position. I'm gonna turn my chair so that I have the back of the chair available to me. Let's do a standing twist. I want you to take your right leg and step it back. And then take your right arm up. Push your, the, the, the butt of your hand up. Reach up. Now that's a twist in itself, but keep pulling that upper hand uh, back toward your foot, toward that right foot. And turn your head accordingly. Let your body just govern what feels right to me as I reach the palm of my hand toward the ceiling and then I start pulling back. How do I need to turn? Well, where's my head need to turn? Where do I look? I've got one hand on the chair for steadiness. You could do that, absolutely. Or if you want a challenge, you could bring both hands up. You can let your other hand grab hold of the wrist of your right hand and let that help you lengthen. Deepen the breath. Let's get both arms back onto the, and hands back to the chair, and then just shake your legs out as we come back to a neutral position. Other side, so just step way back. I, get, I can really feel the squeeze of my thighs together now. So I've got my left leg back. So back leg is the same arm you're reaching up with. So back leg, same arm reaches up. Remember, it's the palm of your hand reaching up. And you start to feel an opportunity for a twist as you pull that arm up and overhead back toward that back leg. So we could use the steadiness of the chair or for more challenge, you get your right hand to grab hold of that wrist 
and pull into a deeper twist. And you're gonna manage the weight of your head. You're gonna figure out because you're residing in your own body, where, how do I turn my head? How do I feel the benefits of this twist in this body? As I breathe in and breathe out and let the breath be your guide. Exhale completely. Let's get both hands back on the chair and shake that out. Now, believe it or not, I'm bringing you back to the chair. We're going to come back and sit. So come on back to your chair. And let's have a seat. Let's reset the body with some shoulder rolls. Change the direction. And then open into a wide angle. I want you to take one leg to meet the other. So you're going to step it over. So it's got a step, don't drag it, step it over. Hands can be on your thighs or you could hold on to your chair. Step over, come back, hands on the thighs or holding on to your chair, your choice. Keep your shoulder blades back, pull the belly in. Flex your foot. So as you're moving your foot from one side to the other, when you flex your foot, it means you're lifting your toes up it feels more active, like you've turned on a whole bunch more muscles by flexing the foot. Now switch, go real quick now, see if you can just go to the other side. So just a way to improve your coordination and you just shift. It's a step up and around, you're not dragging. Foot is flexed. The upper body is pretty stationary, isn't it? So we're trying to isolate the movement in the legs and hips. We're going back to the other side, switch. This time we're gonna hold it, get the thighs together, hold it, inhale up, straight up. Exhale down on that. So you're turning yourself away from your bent knees. Now use the chair, use your body, use your body parts to help leverage you as you lengthen through the spine and keep your spine vertical. You can really feel yourself sort of a bit leaning toward those bent knees. Pull yourself up vertical for the spine to be upright. Turn your head as your body allows. Deepen the breath. Squeeze your thighs together. Feel your feet, including your toes, contacting the ground. Let's deepen the breath. Everybody deepen the breath. In and out. Unwind your head. And then your shoulders, take that big step out. Other side now is just stepping over. I know we're moving from one to the other. Bring your thighs together. We're gonna to do the twist on this side. Squeeze your legs together. Inhale straight up. Exhale, twist away from your bent knees. Keep your spine vertical. Which for me feels like I've got to really make an adjustment to lean toward the other side because the natural tendency is to draw yourself toward those bent knees. So I've got to really intentionally move over so that my spine in fact corrects itself to alignment, to right alignment up and down. Deepen the breath. See if you can keep your head neutral. You know, the chin is just parallel to the floor. You're not tucking your chin. You're not lifting your head up, lifting your chin. It's neutral. I like that I've been really big on this lately where you're feeling the movement of your head by noticing how your ears are moving in space. Pulling like, you know, pulling the ear back. Exhale. Find the rhythm of your breathing. Let's unwind the head and then the shoulders and come back into that wide leg. You know what I've got written down here on my, my signboard, you know, that I use as my guide is rock and squats, rock and squats. So I want you to lift your legs up. And so when we, when we do it, we're gonna be you know, pulling ourselves back. So try one leg at a time that you're rocking and getting those legs up. But we're gonna get to a place where we can get both legs up. So you're rocking and this is the same. See how your body's in a squat position? Get your hands underneath your thighs so you can help your legs lift. 
forward and back. So this is rock and squats. Let your shins lift up, let your feet lift up. See if you can hold it now, get a hold of your under underside of your thighs and get your shins up, flex your feet, toes are drawing towards your shins. You're probably leaning into the back of your chair, that's fine. Breathe in, breathe out, shins are up. Exhale completely, both feet to the floor. Yeah, and let's circle around. Change the direction. Let's bring our feet now back to alignment with the chair's legs. So again, maybe hold on to the chair or your hands on your lap, your choice. Let's lift up one knee at a time and then extend. So you do some coordinated effort of lifting, lifting, extending, extending. Lifting, lifting, extending, extending. So we're just moving ourselves from one side of the body to the other, kind of quick changes going from right to left. Now, if you want to add some arm movement, you could do lifting the knees, lifting the knees, touching the toe, touching the toe, lifting the knee, lifting the knee, touching the toe, touching the toe. You could try that. Last time, both feet to the floor, open up your feet a little wider and just find some movement that feels right. They call this nonlinear movement that you're just moving your body. You know, you don't have any particular pose or structure to it. You're letting your body, matter of fact, closing your eyes helps a lot so that you can just let your body start moving. And while you're doing it, let's put that smile back on our face. Feel that outer sign of our inner joy. Put that smile on your face. And bring yourself back now to mountain pose. So we're not yet leaning into the backrest. We're still forward of that, getting our feet grounded and our palms are facing forward, lifting up the chest. Let's do some point to point breathing now. I want you to just breathe as you draw that breath up. Think about it starting at the base of your spine. So your tailbone, we're at the very base of your spine and let the inhale track all the way through the center of your body to the crown of the head. Exhale down that same pathway. Point to point breath. Mike, I'm gonna encourage you to do this with your eyes closed and with a smile on your face and that you bring your hands into that mudra of the inner smile. So you've got all the fingers kind of laying into your palm and you're just covering them with your thumb and your pinky is extended. And you can just let the arms either be alongside your body or laying on your lap as you do a point to point breath with a smile on your face. It's gonna elongate your breath, isn't it? Because you're gonna follow it all the way up the whole length of your spine to the crown of the head. Exhale it down the same pathway. And notice your body, notice your body's response. You don't need to name it, figure it out, analyze it. You're just noticing your body's response. As you follow that point to point breath from the base of the spine to the top of the crown, back down the length of the spine to its base. Shoulders are back and down. Your head is in right alignment with your spine. Your core strength is engaged. Your smile is on your face. Yoga is the practice of subtraction. We're clearing out the stale energy or the habits of thought that keep us from realizing joy 
as our true nature. Finish the breath you're on, release your hands from the mudra, flutter your eyes back open. We're gonna interlace our hands at the base of the skull. So right at the occipital ridge, just interlacing your hands, and finding a little support there as you let your elbows wide, open wide, and you let your head lean back into that support. We're gonna do a little back of the neck stretch. So as you come back to neutral, head comes back to neutral, draw your elbows in toward each other and let your chin drop down towards your chest. Now I don't want you to pull. You're not gonna pull your head down. It's the additional weight of your hands and arms is plenty. So you keep lifting and lengthening through the spine while you let your chin drop down. And so this, the, the cervical spine has come into this forward movement to stretch the muscles of the neck. And you know, it opens up through the whole trapezius muscle. That's that cape-like back muscle. So if you can allow and not fight this, you can feel a beautiful release through the whole length of your spine right down to your waistline. Keep your chin down, but take your hands away from your head. Bring your hands to your lap, but your chin is still down. Now take a pause to feel the difference of just taking that additional weight off. Feel that in your neck, in your back. Feel it in your body. And bring your head gently back to its neutral position. Hands are coming to the shoulders again, just a gentle touch. And we're twisting side to side, letting your arms kind of carry you from side to side. A little pause here, I gotta get a drink. Let's come back to center, crisscross, bring elbow to the opposite knee. Up and down, it's slow-mo now, we're slowing way down, coming, cooling off and slowing the body down, heading toward our final relaxation. When I started yoga, that was the only way I ever heard it, was that we always have final relaxation. I don't think the word meditation was used uh, for a long time, or I certainly didn't notice it. So final relaxation is where we're headed. Finish it up so it feels like you did the same number of bends to each side and relax your arms. Now shake that out. Open and close your hands. I want you to make a soft fist now. Extend them out in a T or just keep your arms alongside your body. So if you got the energy for the T, let's just circle those wrists. Circle your fists now so your wrists now are getting some TLC. Pull the belly in, shoulders are back. Relax your arms. Let's get a hold of the thigh underneath your thigh. I want you to do the same thing for your ankle joints. So start with one foot at a time to circle around. Really work it now. Pay attention to the experience. Easy right now to check out. You know, you could do this in your sleep. You know this by heart. So I want you to stay aware of the feeling and the movement. Stay with your body. Change the direction often. Try to spread your toes. Let's hug it into the chest and return to the floor. And let's do the same thing on the other side. Interlace your hands, lift up, move your ankle around, move your foot. Keep your body upright. Find your breath now. Don't lose track of your breathing. Get as much movement as you can, including the toes.
Let's hug that knee into the chest. We're gonna lay this leg over, let your ankle come over onto your thigh. I want you to massage your foot now, move your toes. Use your thumbs to kind of press into the balls of the feet, any part that your body will guide you how, what feels good, your foot knows what it needs. To press into that leg, just give it a massage. You're pressing into the thigh, inner thigh, letting your knee kind of get a chance to lay down a little bit, opening up the hip. Let's take that back into the hug knee position, hug knee into chest position, and then we'll bring it back down. Hug this one in and lay it across. Do the same thing. Start with your foot, massaging your foot. Draw your heel in toward that crease of the, between your leg and your pelvis as much as it'll pull in. Find your breath slowing down. You know where we're headed, so you just divvy up your time. So your foot gets a little massage, your leg gets a massage. Let the breath start slowing you down. We'll hug that knee into the chest and return both feet to the floor. Now it's time to scoot back. Go way back so that you're right up against the backrest with your pelvis, and then you can easily access the backrest for your body. Now, if you have a setup that you use where you lay down on your couch or you use a recliner or you stretch out on the floor, whatever it might be, please just make your way there now and do it kind of mindfully as a ritual that you're bringing yourself into this final relaxation and you know, staying mindful and uh, reverent about this part of our practice. And any time you are moved to do so, turn the corners of your mouth into that smile. Bring that back to your awareness. And maybe today, throughout the day, when you feel your body, you feel your face, in the smile that you'll say, oh yeah, that's that outward sign of my inner joy. There it is again. Soften your tongue, relax your facial muscles. So as you lean into the backrest, I want you to just follow me or your own guidance throughout the body so you don't miss anything. So you're very mindfully releasing and relaxing throughout the body. Relaxing your shoulders, your upper arms, down into the forearms, your wrists and your hands. Keep breathing deep breaths now as you come back into your shoulders, see if there's anything else you can release and relax. Straight down the back. Let your back lean into the chair rest or your support and surrender to that. Feel it. Bring your awareness into your pelvis. Soften the buttocks, relax your hips in any way you can. And extend that relaxation into your thighs, top and bottom, down to the knees, through the length of your shins and your calves, ankles and feet. Breathe into your body now. Where do you need to return to encourage more relaxation, more letting go? Soften the mouth. I want you to breathe in through your nose and on the exhalation, think about blowing out a candle. Let that exhalation lengthen as you just simply blow through the mouth like you were gently blowing out a candle. 
in through the nose and blow the candle out with your exhalation. And our intention is to lengthen that exhale. Do that as long as you find it helpful and interesting and release to your normal rhythm of breath when that's more appropriate. Ananda hum, Ananda hum, that's the chant, Ananda hum. Ananda again means bliss or joy. Hum is an invoca invocation. So it says, it says in effect, I am this. So if you could add that now, just a silent chant, Ananda hum. Ananda hum. I'm sticking with my uh, the promise of a new day. It's kind of been a winner for me lately. So that's what I'm reading from. Today's reading, March 27th. Starts with something Eleanor Roosevelt said. We do not always like what is good for us in this world. <clears throat> Today we'll call each of us to make our particular contributions to the moment. There is no guarantee that we will enjoy every experience but we can be certain each one of them will teach us something we're ready to learn because when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Little reflection is necessary for us to realize that our most troubling times have generally been responsible for our greatest growth. Our achievements are always accompanied by per periods of frustration, occasional loss of direction, even momentary despair, because the actual results miss the mark of our hopes. However, the passage of time makes clear that these actual results benefit us far more than those we'd hoped for. Our personal vision is narrow and limiting. We can't really imagine what's in store for us. The most we can do is trust that our experiences have our best interests in tow. I'll remember, today I'm a student and my experiences are my teachers. Let's begin our transition now. Take a big inhale through your nose and exhale it out. Ah. Transition your breath. Ah. Do those sighs. Bring yourself forward into the chair or some way sit up tall from where you are, bringing yourself back into right alignment in your spine. Now open your eyes if you haven't done it. Smile, let's just imagine we're all in the same room. We can all shine our light as we wrap it up, as we sink up our breath, inhale up. Exhale, bring that into your own heart. Inhale, back up. Exhale, let's share this energy with our communities. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a beautiful day. Namaste, my friends. Keep smiling. Thanks, Julie.